G'day, it's Andy here from Aussie Homesteads, part two of the wind generator. So if you recall, we had this colour-coded diagram. I'll leave this here for a while in case you want to screenshot it, like so. Now, let me explain where we're going with this thing. Let me turn it around for starters, and we'll find our starting point. If you go back to part one, you'll notice... What we did was we got the 36 pole stator and we labelled it and colour coded it. Starting with green, blue, red, green, blue, red, etc, etc. And then numbered 1 through to 36 all the way around here. And the last one, of course, is 36. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start cutting and grouping the wires together into groups. Now, remember I explained that there were three poles. There's a green pole, which is the same as this diagram. Green pole, blue pole, red pole. Green blue pole, blue pole, red pole. And the colour-coded wires, I've done them in colours to make it easier to know which ones to join into which. It makes it just easy to put the green into the green, green into the green, blue into the blue, red into the red. And that's what we're going to do all the way around, and it will end up like this diagram. So there's our starting point there, that's number one, okay? So that's the left-hand side of the coil. I'll explain that in a second. There's a left-hand side of the coil and a right-hand side. And there's a wire comes out of each side of the coil. Let me explain that in a sec. So we'll start with the number one, which is green, number two, which is blue, number three, which is red. And you'll see that all of the red on the right-hand side of each coil is joined together. And then the left-hand side of the coils is all going to these wires. All right, let's go back here and let that make that a little bit clearer when you look at it physically. It's all right to look at a diagram. Okay, now if you have a look at each of these 36 coils, you'll notice that this copper wire is about a half a millimetre, 0.8, whatever it is. It's got a coating on it. And it's actually like a varnish coated wire. And the only thing insulating those wires from touching each other is that thin coating of varnish. So if you were to scratch that varnish off of those wires, they would all join together and it would short out. So you've got to be really careful when you're doing this that you don't accidentally take some of the varnish off of these points here because you'll get a short in it. All right, now let's look in detail. So this is our starting point. These will be our three phases out when we're finished, the three wires. And if you remember back to the original videos, you'll see that I had three wires coming out. And those three wires, then, once we've joined all our wires into them, green, blue, red, or whatever colour, I mean, you can use any colour you like, I just colour-coded it for the video. Those three wires go into this rectifier. On this side is your AC side. So this produces three phase power, AC, in, and then it rectifies it into DC power out. And that's why it's called a bridge rectifier. So we're taking three phases, making them a single phase, and using this 12 volt outlet to charge a battery. So this is my rough prototype. So what I've done now is now that I've got it working, I've got another 36 pole motor, and we're going to go through and cut these wires and I'm going to explain to you how they all get spliced into the, each wire and how the other side of each coil, because there's a left side and a right side, I'll get back to that in a sec, they will all get twisted together as well, okay? So, let's start with this, say this one here. This is number one. You'll see how it's green on the end? Number one. You'll notice that this wire on the left-hand side of the coil runs all the way over to the next green coil and it goes down the left hand side alrighty now you'll have a look at the right hand side it goes to the wire so each one of those green ones on the right hand side needs to go into that green wire then that green one on the right hand side wire will go into that into that green one and it'll be exactly the same with the blue. If you'll notice that the blue one starts here, it goes round and round and round and round and round, comes out the left-hand side and shoots over down into this coil. 
That's how they're all joined together so that it makes the motor spin. They all take it in turns and that's what makes the magnets move. But what we're going to do is rewire this from a high voltage motor to a lower voltage motor. And we want to be able to get about 12 to 13, 13.75 13 volts, somewhere around about that. More than 12 volts because we want to charge a 12 volt battery with it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut this video off and to, then to part three, I'm going to cut all of these wires and have them standing up. Now to join them together, some of these are copper clad aluminium. They don't use copper wire in a lot of things now because it's expensive. So they use what's called copper clad aluminium or CCA wire. Luckily, I believe this one's copper. Until we take the enamel off, we can't tell whether it's going to be shiny copper under there or whether it's going to be aluminium. If it's aluminium, they're going to be an absolute nightmare to solder together because aluminium doesn't like to solder to aluminium. I'll show you a shortcut. If we find, if we find that it's aluminium under there, there is a way that you can wind a very fine wire around the aluminium where you've stripped off the enamel. You've got to strip this coating off. You've got to get some fine sandpaper and sand all that coating off it where you want to join them. Otherwise your solder won't stick and you won't get a good connection because this is insulated. Until you take off that coating, it's then it's an insulated wire. They're all insulated from each other. But if you take the insulation off, you will have a bare wire. Now, what we need to do is then join these wires all to into the wires that are corresponding to the colours. And then we take the other sides of the three, get all twisted together. Once I've cut all these wires and stood them all up in part three, it'll be a hell of a lot more easier to follow. And I'll explain it one step at a time. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to, going to go from this stage, as you see it now, with all of the wires in series running all the way around they run all the way around till they terminate right here that is the exit point we're going to utilize that but i'm going to show you how we're going to do that let's going to start with these three then we're going to join these three and then we're going to join these three so each time we're doing green blue red green blue red green blue red all the way around the 36 poles till we get back to the end then we'll have groups of well think about it if they're in threes and there's 36 poles we will have three groups of 12 or 12 groups of three same difference all right i'm going to leave it at this stage you can see how it's well, let's just recap it comes from the point where the wire goes and they're going to end up like these three wires, and each of the color codes is joined into those wires. But this is messy because it was a prototype. So what I've done is, got a fresh one, straight out of a washing machine, and we're gonna start at this point. So let's just recap. The starting point for the green is here, the starting point for the blue is here, and the starting point for the red is here. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two, three, one, two, three, etc., etc. Now, remember it comes from this point to the right side of the coil around and around and around and around i think it's 71 72 windings whatever it is and then it goes to the left hand side of the coil where it's finished and then they've left a nice long length to go to the next green one then it does exactly the same thing it goes down and around and around and around and, around, and then it comes out and they've left it left a nice long length there on that green one and we're going to utilize the fact that they've left all that wire to cut it and join it that's what i'll show you in the next part so stay tuned for part three hope you're enjoying the journey i'm really just thinking out loud and taking you along for the trip so if it helps someone great i'll see you in the next one bye